and new set of tools were developed for Feca Suite 6.3 to help with fixing problems with the geometry or CAD of the model. These tools are available under two new groups under the Transform tab, namely Repair and Rebuild. When CAD is imported into CAD FICO, it is best to apply these tools directly after importing the model. The CAD fixing tools only operate on primitive parts. If a user has created geometry in CAD FICO with parameters, and some problems were introduced in the CAD during the creation process, then to fix these problems with the CAD fixing tools will change the model into a non-parametric model. The first tool that we will demonstrate is the Repair Part tool. This CAD fixing tool heals a body in an attempt to create a valid solid. It will attempt to remove problems such as self-intersecting geometry, missing or misplaced vertices, non-G1 geometry, etc. A model of a human ear is opened in CAD FECO. At present, the model contains several problems as seen by the red exclamation marks next to each part. Also, much of the geometry can't even be displayed in the 3D view. On the Transform tab, click on Repair Part. A simple view is shown, but there are also settings on the Advanced tab. More info on the Advanced settings is available in the User Manual. Click OK and after a few seconds, we see in the message window for each part in the assembly the message all detected faults were repaired or there were no faults to repair. Also in the tree, we no longer see the red exclamation marks. The repair tool is also very useful to repair missing faces caused by broken edge geometry. In this model of a bottle, we focus on face 19. In the 3D view, this face does not appear to exist. We use the repair part tool again. After applying the tool, we see the face has been repaired. A few other problems remain, but we will have another look at this model later in the demo. The next part of the demo will demonstrate the Simplify Part Representation Tool and the Repair and Sew Faces Tool. The Simplify Part Representation Tool simplifies a curve or surface into an analytic curve or surface. The model consists of two coaxial cables. Note that no material properties have been set. If we look in the tree, we see that the model contains many problems. We see in the detail tree messages like loops inconsistent and topology geometry is not G1 continuous. Now select the Simplify Part Representation tool. Again, there are advanced options which can be explored further in the user manual. After clicking OK, we see that two of the four parts were fixed. The message window shows what parts were fixed and the operations that were performed. For the remaining faulty parts, we use the Repair and Sew Faces tool. This tool tries to sew different faces into a solid or sheet part. After applying this tool, the remaining problems in the model are resolved. There are still some redundant edges remaining on the model. After rotating the model, the rotation operation not shown here, we see the redundant edges. These can be removed with the Simplify tool. In this tool specifically, we use the Remove Edges on Metal Surfaces. Click Create and the edges are removed. To further demonstrate the use of the Repair and Sew Faces tool, consider the geometry shown in the 3D view. This is an extreme example with a number of faults. 
we see a vertex does not lie on edges curve. Now we apply the tool with the default settings. We don't see any change in the 3D view, but at least the faults in the geometry have been resolved. Our goal, however, is to be able to mesh the model into a single continuous mesh. If we mesh the model at present, we see the mesh is disjointed, like the geometry. To cause the surfaces to be joined together, we modify the sow tolerance. The faces are now sewn together, but there are some artifacts in the display due to the applied large tolerance. But our goal was achieved in that the mesh edges are now all continuous. The Remove Small Features tool attempts to remove small features such as edges, faces, spikes and gashes. We see in the model two very small faces and a gash. As mentioned, the CAD fixing tools only operate on primitive parts, so we convert the part to a primitive as shown. Now select the part and then the Remove Small Features tool. We see on the Advanced tab all the operations that can be performed with this tool. We change the small feature size and after using this tool we see the small faces and gash have been repaired, although some display artifacts remain. To verify the fix we create a mesh. We see the mesh is continuous where the gash existed previously. The Fill Hole tool attempts to fill a hole based on the selected free edges surrounding that hole. Several options exist for how the hole should be fixed. We will demonstrate each one briefly in this part of the demo. But we first focus on a selection tool that is very useful together with a fill hole tool. That is the Select Edge Loop tool. When one or more edges are selected, the Select Edge Loop tool will find the smallest loop containing these edges. Next, click the Fill Hole tool. For the first part in the model, we fill the hole using a surface that is allowed to make a corner with the faces bounding the hole. For the next part, we use the shortcut QC to select the edges. And now we choose Smooth Face-to-Face -face Transition. Catficker will attempt to make a smooth transition between the faces bounding the hole and the hole that is filled. Now there is also the option to remove the hole completely. Catfica will extend the faces bounding the hole until the hole no longer exists. We also investigate the behavior on two cuboidal parts. If we remove the hole with the Extend Bounding Faces option, the hole is filled and there is no evidence that the hole existed at all. If we allow a cornered transition, the hole is filled but the bounding edges remain. Let's see what happens for these cylinder parts. For the first cylinder we use the cornered option as well as tick the box smooth internal edges. This checkbox does not allow any edges to be formed on the surface that fills the hole. The new surface filling the hole is thus a single smooth surface. On the second cylinder, we choose Smooth Face-to-Face -face Transition. 
Now CAD Figure makes a smooth transition between the bounding faces of the hole and the new surface that fills the hole. For the third, more cone-shaped cylinder, the same option fills the hole as shown. And lastly, if we use the Extend Bounding Faces option on the same type of part, we will obtain a sharp cone shape. The hole fill tool is also demonstrated in these next examples. Select one of the edges, then the Select Edge Loop tool, and then Fill Hole. A smooth transition produces the surface shown. We can do the same with a part in the middle. For the part on the right, we remove the hole and uncheck smooth internal edges. This removes any evidence that the hole ever existed. Lastly, let's go back to the bottle model. We choose again to repair the part, but on the Advanced tab, we enable Suppress Surface Modifications. This way, surface geometry will be preserved and repairs will be confined to getting face boundaries repaired as far as possible. Surface geometry will be left untouched. The repair operation removes several of the problems with the model. However, face 145 and 146 remain problematic. Zooming in, we see these two faces are slither faces. That is, they are very fine and badly defined faces. In terms of any practical wavelength, they are insignificant, so we delete them. However, deleting these faces will cause the mesh to be discontinuous. We also see this solid part has no region in the detail tree. We next use the Repair and Sew Faces tool. Set the tolerance to 1E-5 and OK. After a few seconds, we see a region appear in the detail tree. When a region is shown, it means all the faces bounding that region are continuous and that in all likelihood a continuous mesh can be generated. After creating a test mesh, we see the triangle edges line up perfectly where the slither faces existed previously. A new set of CAD fixing tools have been demonstrated. These tools only act on primitive or collapsed parts, and as such, the fixed model will be non-parametric. The tools are best applied at an early stage in the model development, but they can also be used at a later stage. No exact set of steps exist in CAD fixing. In many cases, a number of tools will need to be applied in succession to obtain a fully usable model. It is recommended to use the smallest tolerances possible. If you have used the tools and need further help, or if you have suggestions or requests on how the tools can be extended, feel free to contact us.